The 2022 PAFA Fellowship Show is on display at the Academy's Hamilton Building. I went to see it on December 1st and ran into an old friend. Hi, I'm Miriam Seidel, and I'm here to talk about the works in this great show. Miriam's lecture was very insightful. Later, she sent me her commentary about the 15 prize-winning works. Since I thought everything was prize-worthy, I may offer a few mutterings of my own here and there. But for much of this movie, we'll just be looking at the art. Oh, I need to add, not every artwork in this movie is physically at the Hamilton building. There is an online component as well. In this piece from the virtual show, I love how Jock Anderson pairs his daughter with a character from de Kooning's idol, John D. Graham. You know you'll find a strong showing of figurative and landscape painting at the Fellowship's annual exhibit. That is doubly true this year, partially due to the fact that the juror, Audrey Flack, is one of America's greatest realist artists. Fred Danziger's painting of a restaurant interior calls back to photorealism in its reflective surfaces and commercial setting but with a warmth that encompasses human connection and a community's resilience. You feel that same spirit in Ron Washington's deeply moving street scene. This urban landscape by Nina Martino nods to Philadelphia's industrial past, with the powerful lines of the Maniunk Canal intersecting with the arches of a bridge over the Schuylkill River. Miriam's right. The Academy's figurative tradition truly comes alive in this show. Whenever I see a Tom Mallon drawing in person, it's a good day. And right next to Tom is this painting by Patricia Miller Long, inspired by Van Dyke, who I am sure would be very honored. I see something almost George Tooker-like in Nick Harris's painting of a child at the top of a mountain of stairs. What a technique! And what a mood Nick has set. Nicole Maya Luga deploys sharp angles through the boy's bicycle and the implied angles of the corner building behind him in a way that mirrors the sometimes jarring visual disjunctions of the city. This strongly drawn triptych by Paulette Bensignor feels both continuous with the gesturing tree branches forming a single image and like three images with varying vegetation and light suggesting different seasons. The stunning velvety surface of Garth Herrick's beach scene created by soft brushwork achieves a vulnerable and luminous beauty capturing a moment of unconscious grace. Like Garth, a number of artists here meticulously render their subjects. 
This is a Northern European tradition that goes back to Van Eyck and the first oil paintings. This style is suited to narrative and mystery, both of which I found in abundance in Chris Sentner's The Dead Dobson Fly's Dream. Nadia Kleonsky's landscape painting, with its small figures dwarfed by towering trees and spacious sky, harks back to the iconic landscapes of the Hudson River School and of painters like Frederick Church who are well represented in Pafa's collection. Of course, there's more than one way for realists to skin the cat. Some prefer a more painterly approach where brush strokes and paint quality are key. As a longtime resident of a shore town, I love how John Meehan so perfectly captures late afternoon at the beach. Ah. Tom Sarantonio is quietly becoming, in my opinion, one of the best pure painters of his generation. The complex life of the painted surface is a perfect correlate to the image Tom is creating. This small but mighty landscape by Deganit Zuberman forces our gaze to the ground, where a dark, thick impasto makes a tortured surface. This ink sketch by Ian Wagner is starkly minimalist and yet implies a kind of over-the-top theatricality that reminds me of Aubrey Beardsley. All right, I can already hear some of you complaining. Is this whole movie going to be about realism? No. But to be fair, our juror is not only feminist as flack, she's realist as flack as well, and shows the works thusly. Hoffa's rigorous tradition of life drawing finds its way into abstract works here as well. Rebecca Siegel's Pearl is a tour de force that builds a hurricane out of collaged flowers and feathers and drawings of various body parts whirling among bursts of abstract shape and unbridled color. This work on mylar, a clear surface, plays with the paradox of mark making and erasure asking us to weigh which is more memorable. Christine Penrose. The monumental nude here sits easily within the expansive color blocks of the painting's abstract composition, making for a dreamy, atmospheric whole. There's a ton of good abstract work in this show. Some have strong connections to the seen world. The Fellowship's hard-working president, Barbara Sawson, is known for realist canvases, but for this show, she offers us an abstract landscape. I, for one, love Laura Marconi's Icelandic Fantasies in Paint. Some artists pay tribute to the world's underlying geometry. Here's James Hamilton, Michael Gallagher,
and Patricia Ingersoll. Other artists seem to me to belong to the non-objective camp. Catherine Stanek's small figure in cast concrete offers both an expressive whole body gesture and a sense of personal interiority. The sculptural offerings in the show are magnificent. Peter Francis sculpture repurposes and enlivens found materials, in this case the evocative cast-offs from bronze casting and textured chunks of marble, to make a thrilling anti-monument suggesting the moment before leaping from a precipice. Ken Hamilton's small diorama of domestic ruin achieves an eerie melancholy in a virtuoso turn on faded, cracked, and crumbling materials that recalls the work of Edward Keenholz. This artist book by printmaker and book artist Rhoda Rosenberg offers poignant variations on a theme of recording and erasure, memory and forgetting. There's also a terrific assortment of photographs. Digital artworks. And mixed media pieces. Making a movie with well over a hundred artists in it is challenging. And if I screwed anything up, it was not intentional and I, I'm sorry. We've looked at realism, abstraction, sculpture, and new media. The last category which I will attempt to shoehorn artists into is what I call isms, cubism, conceptualism, symbolism, and above all, expressionism.
Thanks to Barbara Sawson, Audrey Flack, and everyone who helped make this wonderful exhibition a reality, including the Academy itself for offering its space in the Hamilton Building.